Hello guys, today I will give you 10 tips to improve your gameplay in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Number 1. Wall Checking At the beginning of each game, if your opponent has picked random and you are playing in a castle map, you will have to wall check. Wall checking will give you the information about the race of your opponent. Even if you can't tell what specific faction your opponent is playing, you can still see if you are playing against the evil faction or good faction. This information is extremely important. To wall check, just select a unit and start right clicking on the spot where the enemy castle is. If your cursor makes it jump, it means the enemy is playing a good faction. If it doesn't, you are facing against the evil faction. Number 2. Build the right resource buildings. Go Gondor has very expensive upgrades, that's why you will need to build blacksmiths as your primary resource buildings. Blacksmiths are providing you with the steel bonus and granting you this way cost reduction on your upgrades. To get any bonus from any resource building, you will have to control at least 2 up to maximum 6. Isengard's primary resource buildings inside the castle, camp or outpost are the furnaces, which are very similar to the blacksmiths of the Gondor faction and also provide you the steel bonus for cheaper upgrades. Mordor is a faction that is not relying on upgraded units. The strength of Mordor lies in powerful creatures like trolls and drummer trolls. That's why your primary resource buildings are slaughterhouses. Rohan is the Riddermark faction and the only faction with only one resource building. These are the farms, which are providing you the food bonus, reducing the cost of your cavalry. Unlike good factions, however, the evil factions have a specific resource building outside of their camps and castles, the Lumber Mills. Lumber Mills are able to provide you more resources in compared to slaughterhouses. They also have a very strong strong bonus, the wood bonus. After the construction, it is highly recommended to recruit additional lumber mill workers. You should have around 8 workers on each mill to keep your resource income from the mills as high as possible. Besides harvesting trees, the workers can also be used to repair structures and crush the enemy ants. Number 3. The start of the game. Early game is the most important stage of the game. At the start of the game, it is crucial to know the race of your opponent player. Let's assume you are playing with the Gondor faction, and after wall checking you get the information that the faction you are facing against is evil. It can be Mordor or Isengard, but in either case, your goal is to pressure the enemy Lamrim Mills. Do not pick any power point at the beginning of the game until you can see the specific race of your opponent. Picking heal would be a bad choice against Isengard, but picking Elven Wood would be even a worst choice against Mordor. If you realize that you can't destroy the Lumber Mills of your opponent, try to kill as many Lumber Mill workers as you potentially can to hurt the Eco. Number 4. Use the Guard Button. Guard Button is pretty good when it comes to protect areas, as for example your settlement. After selecting any of your units or even heroes, clicking G button on your keyboard and right clicking on the area you want to be protected, you basically order your units to attack every unit that comes in this area. A great example would be with the Isengard pikemen versus good factions. Select one of your pikemen and guard a settlement. But guard button can also be used to attack areas you can't even see. Nazgûs and eagles are for example way faster when they're attacking than their normal speed. If your Nazgûl is being chased by an eagle, you can order him to attack a farm. If you can't see the farm, which means you can't right click it, you can simply guard the area with the G button after selecting your Nazgûl. Even invisible hobbits can be found this way with your Nazgûls and eagles. And number 5. Work with shortcuts. Later in the game, you will have to pay attention to multiple battles across the battlefield and eventually micro lots of units everywhere on the map. To increase your micro, you will either have to pay attention and micro literally everything perfectly or you want to use available shortcuts. One of the shortcuts I've been using a lot is the follow command. After selecting any unit and pressing the U button on your keyboard, you can order the unit to follow any other friendly unit of yourself or even your teammates. This is very helpful when you are playing with Mordor and you want to provide leadership to your allies. Select your drummer troll, press U on your keyboard and right click on a friendly unit and that's it. Number 6. Do not cash float. RTS games are about tempo and speed. In order to increase your speed, you will have to constantly pay attention to your resources. You need a stable, build it when you are at 800 resources and not at 1000. If you are paying attention to that, you will notice that you will be able to win way more games in the future. Number 7. Do not queue units. The obvious exception to this rule are the Orc Warriors from the Mordor faction. But spending resources for anything without any value is a big mistake. If you are rich enough to queue up 4 Rohirrim in your stable, it might be time to build a second stable instead. Number 8. Master the Creeping Creeping layers in BFME 1 is extremely important in early stages of the game. The extra resources, experience and power points you gain from them can give you a huge advantage which can easily snowball into a quick victory. Practice creeping with different factions and different units. While a goblin layer can be easily creeped, a troll layer can be quite challenging. If you are interested in more detailed video about creeping with each faction, let us know in the comment section down below. Number 9. Quality beats quantity. BFME 1 is a leadership-based game that means one single unit with 
enough leadership can easily beat four units without. Your goal should be to provide enough leadership to your units and this way increase their durability and damage output dramatically. Every faction has either units, power points or heroes to provide leadership to nearby allied units. Every leadership is able to stack with each other and this way you can reach multiplier numbers beyond your imagination. Number 10. Do not lose your heroes and units. Power points in Battle for Middle Earth 1 are game changing and can easily turn a lost game into a victory and a won game into a defeat. Demolishing your buildings in time, keeping your heroes and units alive is extremely important to deny your opponent experience in power points. Losing high valuable units like a fully upgraded Gondonite, Rohirrim, Pikemen or Trolls will make you lose the tempo and might you lose the game. Try to save at least one of the units from the battalion and if they are level 2 or higher, they will automatically respawn over time. This way you can even extend your command points as the command points are calculated per unit and not per battalion. It is definitely possible to have more than 600 command points with Isengard even though the limit is only 500. That's it guys, hopefully this was a helpful video, if it was please don't forget to leave a like on this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future, I will see you next time, until then take care of yourselves, keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards, peace out.